After a year of living in our new home and a baby arriving in less than four months, we've been thinking about updates we can make to our home while life is still calm. Our kitchen has been something we've wanted to redesign since moving in. So with the help of contractors and tradesmen, we are tackling a complete kitchen renovation on a tight budget and an even tighter timeline. Just where it was needed. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to our kitchen. We have lived here for over a year and one of the first things that I knew we wanted to do eventually was renovate our kitchen. It was not a selling point of this house. It was not updated. It still had the original cabinets from I don't know when. I don't think that they're from the 30s, but they definitely are quite old. The appliances weren't super old, but they weren't super new either. And there were just a lot of problem areas in the kitchen and the dining room area. So what you're seeing right now is not what it looked like when we moved into the house. The cabinetry was all painted a beigey yellow. There was a pretty awful stainless steel sink that I knew I wanted to change out right away. That was one of the first things that we changed like within the first couple of weeks. We did this composite quartz sink, drop-in sink, um, and updated it with a faucet that we had in our apartment and painted the walls from pure white to this like more softer sculptor clay color, which we've done in a different part of the house as well in a makeover. So we have done a few updates to the kitchen side of this part of the house. But if you go right on the other side of this wall, you come to the dining room portion of this section. Now, what I love about this little section of the house is it's its own, I say wing, but it's not, we don't have wings in our house, but it's, it's just its own little section. There's just this center divider wall between the kitchen and the dining room, which makes each space feel very narrow, very constrained, and limits a lot of things in the kitchen and a lot of things in the dining room. So we have never used this space. In the over the year that we've lived here, we have never sat in here and I've never invested in any furniture to go in here because it's very narrow. And I did over the year kind of try and brainstorm some ideas of what we could do for the space, maybe put a longer rectangular table and have more of a banquette seating so it, you know, kind of took up some space. But once I found out that this center wall dividing the two spaces wasn't load bearing and structural for this area, I abandoned all thought of making these two spaces work. I knew we were going to make this entire portion of the house a eat-in kitchen. We are 25 weeks pregnant and expecting our baby in just over three months. So if we're gonna do this kitchen and have it done before the baby comes, we have to start right, right now. So I've been having lots of conversations with contractors putting everything in motion and it's finally time to get started. So now I can start to share my design plans with you, share what we're changing, what we're keeping and salvaging and upgrading into this space and how we're making it bigger, brighter and more functional. So let's talk about the problem areas in the kitchen that it is today. So I've already told you about the dividing wall that really creates two individual spaces that are very restrictive and very narrow and it's created dead space for us. We just don't use the dining room at all. The second problem area is the placement of our refrigerator. So when you open it, it hits the wall. You can't actually open the right door to get into the refrigerator. Now, luckily this is, you know, you have French doors so you can open both sides, which we do have to do every time. So this is not ideal. You need space next to your refrigerator for the door to actually open all the way. The future fridge cannot be in this position. It has to be relocated in order to function properly. The next problem area is overall counter space. We have struggled so much over the last year with counter space. We don't have enough for some of the appliances that we use all the time and also room to prep food, to bring in our groceries. They all have to go onto the floor. We have no island. We have no other surface in this area in order to utilize. So everything is just always in the way. We've just 
always struggled with it. At Christmas time, we did add this vintage kind of coffee cart. It's a bar cart that I found at the thrift store so that we could put our coffee on it so we can get it off the counter and we can have more counter space. And that did help a ton because we obviously have the espresso machine and the Nespresso and coffee mugs and stuff. So we were able to get that not only off the counters, but also out of the cabinetry. So we were able to open it up a little bit. Just the addition of that one cabinet had significant improvement. Problem number four is really a huge lack of storage. We have cabinetry that's very narrow and not very deep, and we have no pantry. So it forces us to use a lot of the cabinetry for dry goods and snacks and you know pantry type items. We just, we have no place. So storage is definitely a big one that's lacking in the space. I don't know if this is particularly an issue, but it's just, again, just creating dead space here is this little corner. We have a door, our patio door that goes out to the front. So you can't put anything here at all. You can't put like a little breakfast nook or a little breakfast table or even additional tabletop counter storage. You know, I was, I was thinking I could put like a hutch in here or something for more storage. Can't do that because you need access to go outside. And then you also need access for this doorway to go into the dining room. So it just left this dead area. So I don't think that that's planned really well. And although it is the perfect time for me to be filming right now because it's the perfect time of day where we have the most sunlight, another struggle that we have throughout the entire house really is a lack of natural daylight. And at certain times of day, rooms can go really, really dark. So we get great morning sun in the front of the house. And then when it passes the trees in the back of the house, it gets pretty dark in the whole house. By opening up this one wall, this whole section of the house will now get morning sunlight and afternoon sunlight. And in addition, I would love to bring some skylights into this space as well so that we get just all day sunlight, taking the opportunity while we're doing renovations to add that in because we do have skylights in the rest of the house to help with that too. So it'll match the flow and the style of the house. A few things that we have to talk to people about like the contractor and, and specifically a structural engineer is this wall because we need to confirm that it isn't structural, that it isn't load bearing and it doesn't need extra support elsewhere. Also, we have to relocate the electrical panel, <laughs> which I feel like is one of the hiccups. It just makes it that much harder. Is it doable? 100%. 1000%. But, you know, it's still, still something. It's just not a blank wall that you can just rip down. So it's definitely something we have to take into consideration. And also a huge design element that I really want in this space is to make the ceilings feel taller. This is the shortest section of the house. We have eight foot ceilings in here. And because of all of the additions, all of the ceilings are a little bit different and a little bit sloped differently. It's very strange. Because we're removing this and we already are getting a structural engineer to take a look at it, I want them to take a look at the idea of actually doing a covered cathedral ceiling in here which would look the same as it does in our main living room, which adds so much height in the center of the room, making the overall room feel so much larger. The only inspiration photos that I could actually find for cathedral ceilings have beams that follow the shape of the ceiling from side to side. And I don't actually wanna do that. I wanna have the same look as our living room, two beams that go at the break point of the slope of the ceiling. Whether these beams are structural or faux just for looks, the engineer will determine when he gets here. In the cottage, I was actually considering vaulting the ceiling in the living room, and I opted not to do it because we already had 12 foot ceilings. It already felt tall, we didn't need it, and it was gonna be extra cost. But when we have eight foot ceilings, I told myself, I was like, I'm not going to abandon the idea vaulting the ceiling. I really want it. I think it's going to make a big impact. So structural engineer would take a look at all of that and make sure that we just put everything in place to where it's perfectly structured and we're all good to go. So let's talk about the inspiration and overall design I'd like to accomplish in the kitchen. So I've been working a lot on sketching the floor plan on where everything is going to go, 
where we're gonna move the refrigerator and the oven to once we remove that center wall, how we're gonna optimize the storage and increase the counter space and really get all of our must haves in this kitchen renovation. And that really started by finding inspiration that I really liked and thinking through all of the problem areas in the kitchen. And my biggest piece of advice when you're doing a renovation or you're gonna be doing a new build is to really figure out what you actually want. Do all of your research, find your inspiration pictures, even if you just sketch out what you want because you're gonna have to tell so many people what you want that you wanna be really clear about it because they're not gonna be inside your head. They're not gonna understand what you really want to accomplish. So the more you can show them, the better. So that's really what I did going into this process. I started with inspiration and I created a board on, I love to use Milanote and Pinterest together to really compile all of my ideas and save inspiration photos. I love this kitchen. Kudos to this <laughs> DIYer. I love her kitchen so much. I love the color palette with the darker cabinets and the darker oven and range and the fluted glass and all of these elements are so beautiful to me. So that was a big jumping off point and I'll put her name on the screen because she's this kitchen I absolutely love. But of course we'll do it in our own way. Because we're going darker on the cabinetry and the appliances, I do wanna keep the wall color more neutral and lighter so that it still feels bright in the space. And I would love to go with the same sculptor clay color that we did in the living room. I think that would be beautiful. We're also keeping the brick floors so I put that inspiration so I had all my elements in one space. I'd love to go with a lighter countertop. And this custom hood, I'll put the designer on the screen, I love. I wanna take this as inspiration and make it my own, make it my own shape, but I love how it has the molding. I love how it has lots of character. I love how there's little niches inside for like spices and things up top. I love the shape overall. I definitely wanna do black appliances cause I did the opposite at the cottage, which was lighter with a darker countertop. So I'm kind of flipping the color palette a little bit to give me something different. I definitely want a paneled refrigerator. I love the one that we did in the cottage, the Mila refrigerator, the French door. I abs we absolutely love that fridge. And then paneling it so it looks like cabinetry, so there's not this, this big, large, you know, stainless steel object in the kitchen. I don't really like appliances as statement, features except for the oven. Since we're opening up the center wall, we could do two things. We could either have a island that we put in the center with bar stools when a big pretty countertop, or we could do a dining room table and have an eat-in kitchen. For me, I love the idea of doing an eating kitchen because it looks and feels more reminiscent to the time. Like they didn't have islands in the 30s. <laughs> it's more of a modern thing that we're doing. And since we're optimizing all of the countertop space along the perimeter of the room, I think we can really do this eat-in, all-in-one, all-encompassing room where we have our dining room table that'll seat eight because there's plenty of space inside the kitchen. And I love that look, and we can always come back and add an island later if we decide in the future to make the front formal living room into a dining room or something like that. Like we could always change it up, but I think starting here is such a great way for us to get both spaces in one. And even if we were gonna do an island, I actually wouldn't put anything in the island like the sink or the oven or anything. It would just be a flat, taller surface. Because we want to optimize the sunlight, I really wanna do skylights in this space. So I'm gonna to talk to the contractor and see what's possible, how big we can make the skylights, whether we do two or four, and I'm thinking just two over by the oven area. Not only are we gonna break down the wall that's gonna give us morning and afternoon light, but also all day sunlight from these skylights in the ceiling, which is in the rest of the house as well. Love to have a farmhouse sink, 36 inch big, one basin, farmhouse sink because Romeo doesn't like the divider in the center and he's the one that's majority doing the dishes. <laughs> so we're gonna give Romeo what he wants. Bring in some brass hardware by reusing what we already have, um, but bringing in some new faucets and things. I also do wanna do a pot filler over the stove because I feel like in this new layout, we are kind of spreading things apart a little bit. There's more distance between the sink and the oven and the refrigerator. And this is just how it works best. I work through tons of different layouts and this is how it, it really, really works for us. Um, so because we're separating those 
things a little further, I think a pot filler over the oven to fill pots when we're cooking is definitely going to be really good. This pantry storage wall actually inspired one of the designs that I'm gonna show you in a minute in, into the kitchen um, because I do wanna optimize the storage, but also pretty storage because I have beautiful china and I have things that I use at certain times of year that I need places for. And so this is definitely an inspiration. I love it that it goes over the door too. So I'll show you in a minute how I'm going to kind of incorporate that same idea into our kitchen. And we are gonna be doing some new French doors going out to the patio. So this was a cutout from a magazine that I saw that I loved. I loved how tall and skinny the doors were, doing them a little bit uh, different on the bottom so that they match the rest of the doors in the house so that everything looks really cohesive. So I've actually been working with an architect on Fiverr to render my sketches into 3D visuals so I can really see what's going on. I can see the balance of things. I can see the cabinetry. Now I'm hesitant to show these <laughs> because I feel like they look too mid-century and too modern. These renders are lacking all of the character that I'm gonna bring into the space from the decorative toe kicks to crown molding to the pretty hardware. It feels very flat and modern to me, but these are just to give you an idea of placement. So don't look at them too literally. And you're just gonna have to stay tuned through this entire process to see it all come together because the way that it looks in my head is really, really beautiful. So trust me like you trusted me at the cottage. On the left side of the kitchen, I love that there is this little box window that looks out to the garden and our front yard. So I love that this is where the sink is. And when designing this whole area, I really took into consideration where existing plumbing was, existing lines for like the gas and things like that, so that we would have less costs that we are, would encounter when we did renovation. If I already like the sink here, I just want to update what's kind of like happening around it. It works in our favor to keep it here because everything that it needs to function is already here. Love where the sink is positioned. I just want to extend the countertop as far to the door as possible without messing with its opening and extend the countertop as far right as I can as well. By doing that, we'll not only increase the counter space, but we'll also add more storage underneath and also more storage up here because we can make this wider as well and put multiple cabinets. With this center wall gone now, obviously everything on this wall has to be relocated. So we've got the oven and range, the hood, and storage. All of this needs to be relocated and we won't have anything in the center. So what I'm thinking, keep this door and this window, but from this window on, it becomes the back wall of our kitchen, which will have storage, the oven and range, the hood, a beautiful hood we'll design, and also the refrigerator. Right now, I'm essentially standing where a portion of the oven will be, right here. And then they'll have some counter space, some upper cabinetry, and our refrigerator. <laughs> this is where it will go. And it works in our favor massively that the refrigerator goes here because the house swings and cuts out right here. So it has enough degree that we can actually open the doors and it actually fits really, really well there. So because the refrigerator will go there, we have to close up this door going to the pool from this area. I really like, and I'm all for, because I actually want to turn these two windows into tall French doors that will open to the pool. So we're kind of trading one door for two, just making this great indoor-outdoor feeling and adding more glass. I want more glass in the doors so that it just lets in as much light as possible. And we have a really cool access from the kitchen to our pool area, to the grill, the barbecue that's outside during the summer months. We love, we love this house for the pool. So making that access will be really beautiful. So currently this is the only entrance from the rest of the house to this section of the house, to this kitchen. And it will stay that way. We're only going to have one entrance. And because we had such a lack of storage, I actually got this curio cabinet and refinished it for all of my china. 
I have no space for all of my pretty dishes and pretty glassware. So to remedy that, this wall, I really wanna make a statement storage wall. It's going to have lots and lots of cabinetry, lots of millwork, but it's going to not only have our pantry, which will go right here in this corner, which will have every inch optimized with like drawer slides, you know, like pull out, it'll have like an appliance section. It'll be a really good one. We're gonna do this really well. And then above the entrance and all the way to the other wall is all going to be lower storage and upper glass storage for prettier things. Our coffee bar will go there. We'll have all of the space for our dishes. My prettier dishes and things, um, drinkware, all of that stuff will go there. So we're really optimizing the storage here. Even though a portion of it will be reeded glass on the front, it's still gonna have that much of a privacy factor to where even if it's not perfectly staged, which knowing me, it always will be perfectly aligned, it will still look nice because it'll have a little bit of texture. So you won't really be able to see through it all that well. It'll add some lightness to all of the cabinetry around. You guys know if you've been following for a while, I love to repurpose and salvage and reuse wherever I can. So some things that we are keeping for sure and repurposing are all of the original windows. You could never get me to not love the original 1930s windows and the door as well. We're keeping all of that original. I actually love these lights. I don't know if they'll be big enough to repurpose into a room that's going to double in size, but it's worth a shot. And even if they're not gonna work in here, I love them. I wanna keep them for something else. All of the hardware that we actually swapped out that I found vintage, we're gonna be repurposing into the new design. The refrigerator we are keeping and we're actually just going to put into our garage to use as a secondary uh, refrigerator. And we are keeping our existing dishwasher for now. It's great, it's a Bosch dishwasher. I love it, it's in perfect condition. Why not try and repurpose? I might just try and change its color from stainless steel. We'll do like a little DIY on it, hopefully. The brick floors, we are definitely keeping in this space because it's continuous and looks great with the rest of the house because we have the same brick flooring in the living room and also in our primary bedroom. So we're gonna be keeping it. We're just gonna patch any portions that will need to be patched from like this wall being removed. You know, we don't know where it starts and stops. So we're gonna be patching it, keeping it. These beams are faux as well. They're not structural, but I'd love to keep them <laughs> and use them for something. I don't know if they're solid. I think they are. We are gonna be putting some beams in here in the design, but I, these won't work. They won't be long enough, but I'd love to like make something out of it or maybe something for outside or I don't know, something I'd love to, to salvage them and keep them. And even though we're changing these two windows into doors, I wanna keep the windows because if we find a future project that I need windows for, maybe outside, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I love to hang on to stuff like that because we already own them. I love them, let's keep them. Let's just stack them in the garage and keep them until I know for sure that we won't reuse them. Coming up next in our kitchen renovation. We are literally cooking less than 24 hours ago in this kitchen and now it's like not here. Which will make it higher. This would have taken us probably like two months. Yeah. And then last night I kind of had a panic attack because each of these doors would be 21 inches by five foot tall. You want me to replace this? You want me to replace this? You want me to... What's gonna happen is this. If we can do one big one with multiple doors. I mean, we'll do lights, lights. 